Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Northern Echo. Welcome to this Facebook Live on this beautiful evening here in Newcastle. Uh, we are here today at Blackfriars Restaurant at Newcastle Restaurant Week. is in full flow this week. Uh, it's on until Sunday, been on all this week. Uh, lots of great deals if you're coming down to enjoy some food uh, in the city. Loads of restaurants taking part. So we've come down here to talk to uh, anyone who are uh, organising the Restaurant Week and also uh, the people here from Blackfriars Restaurant as well. So I'll go and talk to Rachel. First of all, from anyone, nice to have you here. Uh, thanks for having us. Brill. So, Restaurant Week started, I think it was 2011, didn't it? And it's kind of just escalated all from there. It did, yeah. So, anyone's Newcastle Restaurant Week was started as a concept back in 2011. Uh, we only had 13 restaurants at the time, which we got. Blackfriars was one of the original restaurants, and it's grown exponentially to the event that it is now. Two events a year we run. It is the culminating event of the calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have over 110 restaurants taking part this week, and it just gives people the opportunity to dine out at some of the city's best restaurants um, at discount rates of 10, 15 or 20 pounds a person. Yeah and how important is it for for, I guess for, for the restaurants and also for the city as a whole to have these weeks to bring more people in and you know get the hospitality industry really booming. Yeah well it's a great opportunity to put a pin in the calendar for everybody to get together whether that's family whether it's friends whether it's co-workers for a lunch during the week um, it's just fabulous and the North East really gets behind this initiative. We know from the last two events that we ran last um, financial year that that made a 1.8 million pound economic impact for all those businesses taking part and naturally although we were Work very closely with the businesses that do the venues that take part that has a ripple effect on the local economy from suppliers it has an impact on transport providers the bars nearby as well and the biggest thing to take away is it's such a fantastic week the atmosphere amongst the city there's an electric buzz not just from people who are dining but also the venues taking part themselves mm -hmm. so we're incredibly proud that it's grown to the you know it's grown to the event that it is today yeah and what have you heard from the restaurants that are taking part this week in terms of the impact that it's having i mean obviously we'll talk to uh, the owner here at Blackfriars in, in a moment but what impact has it has kind of overall yeah we've already heard great reports from on the ground and that's not just because the sun is shining yeah um, you know we've heard good timing isn't it really yeah yeah. Timing, yeah. Um, it means that people like Blackfriars here can open up their outdoor areas as well. Um, summer holidays, so a lot more families are coming into the city as well, which is great. They're taking advantage of the deals also. Um, so it's just, we've heard fantastic feedback from them on the ground, not just in terms of the number of diners that they're getting through the doors this week, but also in terms of how happy people are that to see the event back. Um, and again, the sunshine. So it's a perfect combination for this week. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously grown quite a lot. I think it's more than 100 restaurants involved this time, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's, yeah. Yeah, over 110 involved um, of some of the, the city's most well-known restaurants. Um, it, it's great because it means that if you've got a perfect favourite that you come back to every so often, you can come back out again. But people also use this as an opportunity to visit restaurants they've never done before. And that's really why a lot of restaurants do get involved. It opens those doors to diners who've never experienced what they're like, gives them a first class hand of exactly how great the service is, um, you know, when they do go into the venues. So all around just a, a great week to get out and about and really support all the independent restaurants across the city. Mm -hmm. And I presume during COVID all of this kind of stuff had to be paused, didn't it? You wouldn't be really able to have done restaurant weeks. So how important was it coming back out of the pandemic? to get this kind of thing going, going again? Naturally, the pandemic was a hard time for everybody. And I think when we came back in the January, there was still that awkwardness of, is there going to be a lockdown? Is there not going to be? Um, the restaurants really championed it as much as the diners. And we saw that being a record-breaking year. And ever since, um, both the January event that was post-COVID, last year's summer event, and the January just gone, um, you know, they were record-breaking every time. So in January just gone, um, there was over £1 million. It's the first time we've ever broke the million pound record in terms of direct economic impact. So the, there's a real appetite, pardon the pun, but there really is for this sort of event. Yeah, no, perfect. And I mean, this is just part of, um, obviously, because you're from NE1, which is the um, works across Newcastle. Uh, this is only one of the summer events, isn't it, that you've got going this year? You've got all sorts of stuff going on in the city. Yeah, absolutely. So, very busy summer for the team at Newcastle NE1. So, we've got, as well as Restaurant Week this week, we're also in our summer in the city activities um, programme. So, that's over 180 different free activities across the city, most of them placed on the key side, working with key organisations from Dance City, Newcastle Arts Centre, uh, we're working with Pure Gym, a lot of local providers as well. 
well, which just means that it's opportunities for people to come in, try new activities, enjoy organisations in the city. And then we've also got on top of that Screen on the Green, which is always a big favourite for everyone in the North East. Mm -hmm. um, so this year we've got 16 free films a week, which are showing on Old Eldon Square. So at 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock every day. We also have Blockbuster Thursdays, which are at 6 o'clock on a Thursday evening, and toddler takeovers on a Tuesday at 10.30 as well. So absolute fully packed schedule on top of everything else that we're delivering. Um, we've got fantastic installations. So we've got a 90 foot mural on the front in front of the urban garden on the quayside. We've got lots of different things going on across the city. So we would urge everybody to come on in, enjoy what the city has to offer for the next three weeks as part of the summer. And there'll always be something on, that's for sure. And if people want to find out a little bit more about all of those, those events that are going on, but obviously specifically restaurant week as well, where's the best place for them to go to do that? So the best place is to get onto our website, which is get in to newcastle.co.uk and um, everything is on there but also you can follow our social channels at newcastle anyone or at get into newcastle um, and on there you have everything from what's going on events wise to the artistic installations right the way through to as well lots of other things which are going on in the city so for example newcastle city council are hosting Novum festival this weekend loads of opportunities to get in get involved and um, really enjoy the summer while the sun's out Definitely, it has eventually arrived now somewhere as well. So we have, why not? Willa, thank you very much for your no time. Uh, if you've just joined us on this Facebook Live, we're here at Blackfriars, which is one of the restaurants taking part in uh, Restaurant Week this week. That was Rachel from Any One, and now let's speak to uh, Andy. Yes, yes Andy. from Blackfriars. Do you just want to introduce yourself, first of all? Yeah, Andy here, the owner of Blackfriars Restaurant here in Newcastle. Yeah. Brilliant. So, as we just heard, you were one of the first restaurants to take part back in 2011. So, what drew you initially to taking part in Restaurant Week, and it keeps drawing you back every year? Well, it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> long. I think we were one of 10 or 11 restaurants uh, that took part. Someone had a great idea that if we offered a cut price menu, it would draw people in, um, which worked, but it's only really worked through uh, the work of uh, Newcastle Anyone's promotional kind of machine that's kind of pulled people mm -hmm. here. And that's really what's kept us going over the years. You know, it's grown from yeah, 10, 11 uh, restaurants taking part to well over 100 now, I think 110. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, but there still seems plenty of diners to go around, as you can see behind yeah. me. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's working. And although, in a sense, we offer quite a cut price menu, uh, and, uh, and I guess a lot of the restaurants don't make uh, money from the, the food itself, it puts bums in seats and people come and drink mm -hmm. and make money from the drink, so it works for everyone. Yeah, and, and what impact does it have in terms of, you know, bookings, or in terms of, you know, obviously it's quite busy here tonight. Is this as busy as it would be this time last week or ne this time next week? What, what impact does it have? Well, if you came here about two weeks ago when it, when it was raining. As, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were saying the, sum, the summer is finally here. Um, this, this works during the sun, sunshine, so thank God the sun has finally come out, and let's hope that it stays uh, for the rest of the uh, summer. Um, but, yeah, it, we, we would normally have on a quiet kind of August or January, uh, the other uh, time that um, Restaurant Week uh, takes place. Maybe 100, 150 people in each day and we've got, I think, 400 in today, 500. Wow. So it's, it's a big difference to us. And do the majority of those actually people coming in dine off the, the, the Restaurant Week menu as well? So it's, it's, the, it's, yeah, the, you it's can... the only, it's the only uh, menu that we can offer in, in terms of practicalities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a tight menu, it means that, and it's, um, it's engineered so that we can um, we, we can serve it to that many, that many people. Yeah. So, if people haven't been to Blackfriars here before, I'd never been here before until I got here about half an hour ago. Um, tell us a little bit about what the restaurant's all about, what, what your offering is here. Well, uh, Blackfriars, it's a 13th century uh, former Dominican friary. So it was built in 1239. So it's been here the best part of 800 years. We've been here a little bit less than that. We've been <laughs> here for uh, 22, 23 years. Since 2001, we right. took it over. And, and in that time, we've kind of slowly expanded in, into different parts of it. Uh, so the, um, we've been in the main restaurant since the um, uh, beginning, but we've taken over um, a big banqueting uh, suite. We've got tasting rooms. Which I believe is just behind us, isn't it? it is, yeah, we can head yeah. down that way, I guess, if you want yeah, to, yeah, to show yeah. us just outside. Yeah. So we have, um, um, we, have, we have a little sneaky look in, if you right, want Right, yeah, yeah, why not? Um, a little banqueting suite, which is really interesting because it's where royalty would have come and they would have been um, hosted by mm -hmm. uh, the, the friars back in the 13th century. So if you look in here, um, we would have had the likes of um, well. Edward I, um, Henry the um, Henry the Third would have spent time in here.
Um, and then behind us, behind my bag, there's a pit race stall which we launched six, seven years ago. Um, but actually, the newest thing, the most kind of important thing to us at the moment is this cloister garden. So the cloisters were being an important um, part of the um, priory um, at, the, uh, at the time. And um, as much as we've used this to an extent, then it was really the pandemic that kind of brought outdoor mm -hmm. seating and outdoor dining into sharp focus. Yeah. And um, kind of was the catalyst really for us to start working on this. So three years of extensive planning and commissions with the archaeologists and Historic England and the council and, and so on enabled us to kind of eventually get all the permissions to open this, which we've done this year. So, yeah. And in terms of um, the cuisine on offer, if people are coming down uh, wondering what's, what's on the menu, what kind of things can they expect? What would you recommend, most importantly? Oh, well, that's a good question, isn't it? So, um, I, as I say, the restaurant week menu is quite tight um, in order for it to allow us to serve it to like this many people. Mm -hmm. Um, but the things that are popular are things like fish cakes, fish cakes with a homemade tartar sauce and, and lemon. We do um, a very popular um, whipped goat's cheese with um, roasted beetroot and candied walnuts, which works very well. Uh, we do a steak, which goes down really well. Um, so it's a flank steak, um, which cooks very, very nicely with an anchovy butter um, and um, parmesan and truffle potatoes. Uh, and then to finish off, Things like um, strawberry pavlova, uh, very summery, very um, seasonal at the moment, and also sticky toffee pudding, which I think we've had sticky toffee pudding on our menu for about 20 years now. And it's kind of one of those ones that we can never. You've never got, take. you can't go wrong with a sticky yeah. toffee pudding, can you? No, it's but, a, it's a classic dessert. It, it is, um, but we also um, do a lot of food here that has a nod towards our Dominican past up here. So we do medieval banquets in here. We do a lot of medieval style cookery mm -hmm. um, in here and we kind of um, we create the kind of etiquette and the atmosphere of um, medieval banquets um, in here. And then the a la carte menu um, is, is, quite, is more extensive um, the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. We can't offer it during this week. Um, but yes, we do lots of different things. Yeah, and, and the main restaurant, I believe, is sort of the, the, the building behind where yeah. you're standing there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But you can probably see the restaurant and the uh, bar. In the, uh, just in the, in the corner, corner as well yeah, yeah. yeah. no absolutely Brill, well obviously it's it great to see it, it busy isn't it and I imagine during the pandemic there'll be a kind of point in time where you thought we're never going to get back to this so it'll be lovely to first of all see it busy anyway after the pandemic but weeks like this must be sort of you know the cherry on top of the cake absolutely yes it's been yeah a, a, a weird time for us I guess we had the pandemic where we all kind of stood still um, and um, nothing really happened the kind of couple of years out, out of the pandemic were, were probably the busiest years that we've ever had yeah. you know looking back on it you don't look back and with thinking about that but it went really really well for us um, but the last year has been probably the most challenging that we've had and probably the most challenging that the sector has had the sector does tend to be kind of fairly resilient and people bounce back. And is that with the increasing costs and everything that we've seen over the last year yeah, as well? Yeah, a mixture of things. Uh, wage costs have um, gone up by 10, 11 percent, um, which is great for our staff and really mm -hmm. pleased really for them, but it's a cost that we have to meet somewhere. Utility costs uh, are high and food inflation. So food inflation is still about 20 percent year on year. So um, that just makes it very, very difficult for us. Uh, so something like this is just it, yeah, like so important to us. Well, yeah, and if people are possibly thinking about coming down tomorrow or Sunday, restaurant week's still on. Have you still got any availability over the next couple of days, or is it? Well, you'll be expected to be pretty busy, I would imagine, anyway. We've, but we've been fairly full. We've been pretty. I'd say we've been pretty much full all week. But there are always tables that crop up mm -hmm. for one reason or another. So it's yeah. always worth trying. Uh, so if people want to come down, or give us a call. Um, you know, Black Friday's restaurant, you'll find, you'll be able to Google us and find us um, and uh, try us out. If you can't, then just try to come down another time. Our regular menu is still great value uh, menu. Or head to our sister restaurant, Dobson Parnell, which is on the quayside, offering very, very similar style and priced menu. And at Dobson Parnell, we are extending the restaurant week offer for the rest of this month. There you go. Well, there's a sales pitch if everybody's so on. <laughs> Brill, no, perfect. Well, it's great to see you know somewhere so busy and, and bouncing back from COVID. So thank you very much for your time. I'll let you get back to yeah. waiting tables or keeping, keeping an eye on what's, what's going right. on. Thanks, Brill, Daniel. no bother. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have just joined us, just been checking to Andy there from Blackfire's Restaurants here in Newcastle, um, which has been taking part in Restaurant Week this week. 
Um, just show you around outside. Lovely out here in the sun this evening. Restaurant week is on until Sunday. You can get discounted meals at restaurants throughout Newcastle for 10, 15 or 20 pounds. Um, and you can still come down. There's loads of restaurants. Uh, the full list is available on the NE1 website or also on the Northern Echo website. Uh, and it's always great to come down and support local businesses and restaurants as well. So thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely evening and weekend and we'll see you all again very soon.